Welcome to the latest episode of the Salon Marketing Q&A. My name is Chris Brennan, and on this show, every single week, you ask a question about salon marketing, and we answer it live on Facebook. As I highlighted before, you can actually access this episode on our Facebook page after the fact. So if you don't have the time to literally listen to it live, or you want to come back and check something that you might have missed, you can catch it on our Facebook page. Alternatively, we actually take these posts, these videos, and we put them on our YouTube page as well. So there's many places where you can go so you can access the Salon Marketing Q&A. Before we get into today's topic, I just want to highlight that if you have any questions that you'd like answered on this show, please let us know in the comment box below, or you can email us at letsgrow at forest.com, and we'll dedicate an episode to your query. So usually how we do this is before we jump straight into the question, I like to kind of highlight what we've been doing for you guys over the past week, just to keep you up to date with how things go. Now, aside from the usual three blog posts a week that Zoe writes, as well as the weekly podcast, we have just released the brand new edition of our famous Facebook Salon Marketing eBook. It's called the Salon Owner's Ultimate Guide to Facebook 2017 Edition. This is fantastic. We've been planning this out for quite a bit because when we originally wrote the other one, uh, it was written by Connor Keppel. Um, that was a couple of years ago. And if you are used to like running your business page on Facebook, the one thing you'll see is they're constantly evolving it. They're constantly updating and changing it. So I'm so thrilled that we finally introduced the brand new edition that is completely up to speed with absolutely everything that can help your business on Facebook thrive. It's completely up to date and it's ready to go for you guys. So it's cool. Um, definitely check that out. I believe we'll be dropping a link into the comments so you can download it directly. And when you download it, a copy of it will be sent to your email as well. So you can have it at your convenience. Um, it was written by Zoe this time and I've read it a few times and it's fantastic. It's everything you need to know about Facebook this year that can really help your business. Okay, so why don't we now get into this week's question? So this question comes from Sarah and she asks, I constantly send out emails to my clients, but I don't get the returns I want. What am I doing wrong? Which is a very valid question and I think something that a lot of salon owners struggle with or have issues with um, is basically email marketing in general. Um, the way I look at this question and how I'm planning on answering it today would be looking more at the anatomy of what makes a successful email campaign. So that's what our focus will be today. Um, so Sarah has a good point. So a lot of times we use emails for our marketing material. So the topics for you guys could be that you have a new menu or you have an offer coming out or you're just trying to fill some spaces for that week, which is great because um, there's many different ways you can reach this audience. One is social media, another is SMS, but a cheap one and a successful one and kind of an old school one at this point is email you would have collected their data, hopefully, when they came in last time to book an appointment. So now you can get back to them, get in touch with them again, and remind them to come back into you through email. But that being said, email rates are usually a bit lower than like, say something like SMS. Like an SMS would have a 99% open rate, whereas on average, depending on industry, you're looking at email marketing would get about a 20% open rate, and potentially like a 5% click-through rate. So if you had like an online booking link within your email, the likelihood of people clicking that link would probably be about 5% of the people you sent it to. Give or take, and everybody's different, but there's kind of like industry averages there. Um, but how do we get the most out of your email campaigns? Because as I say, it's cheap, it's quite easy to send off, but that means that a lot of other people are doing it, so what you're trying to do is you're not competing with the other competitors as such, like other salons. What you're competing with is attention for that person, for that person's attention about everything because 
Even if you look into your own email box, just look at how much email you receive. And what you're trying to do is make sure that your message is the one that they open and they engage with because it's a very, very busy battleground. That inbox is crazy these days. But there's definitely ways to get their attention and to make sure that you can get the most out of this campaign. So let's go from the very beginning for the anatomy of an email, an email campaign. So I would start with the purpose before specifically going into what you're saying, let's go into like the overview of like, what are you trying to get out of this? What is your comp? What is the, the mission? What are you trying to accomplish? So as an example, let's say that you are going to be putting out a message that is highlighting the new Christmas opening hours that you're going to have. Like Christmas is coming soon. Some people like to send out an update of what the opening hours are like. That's one clean, direct message. And email marketing works best when you're not trying to say a lot of things in one email. It's one clear message. If you're a blog writer, you'll understand what it is like when you talk about keywords. So in a blog, it's important to have one keyword, and that's for like SEO and that's for search. But it's also really important to ground the topic of that blog into one specific point. Same thing with email. So your email should be about one topic. If your topic is that you have a brand new menu or you have an event that's coming up, it should pretty much be completely about that. From beginning, middle, and end, it's one message all the way through. So right away with your email marketing, understand what it is that you're trying to accomplish and everything that's going to be in and around this email is going to be with that focus in mind. So it's not a place to start going, oh, and then we also have this. Oh, and just as a final reminder, check out this because people's attention spans will drift and they'll get confused as to what you're trying to accomplish in this situation. So right away, one clear cut purpose is the very beginning. It's like the DNA of your campaign. So once we have that down, Let's go into um, how your audience is going to actually engage with you. What's the first thing they're going to see? They're not going to see the contents of your email. What they're going to see is they're going to see the subject line. They're going to see who it's from, and they're going to see the subject line. And I think that a lot of um, people, when they make a mistake in email marketing, they try to put too much into the um, subject line, or they don't put enough in, you know? Um, I always like the subject to be connected to what the the campaign is about, but it's really just a tease of it. It's a trailer for what it could be. So if you were, say, to run a special, a special offer, you don't need to describe what the special offer is in the subject line. Like a lot of people, I, I've seen um, when we studied like a lot of people's emails, a lot of salons, businesses, emails, they'll put literally what the offer is in the subject line. Thing is, that's already making that audience member aware of what the contents are specifically. So they're making a judgment call on a one sentence statement to go, I know I don't need that. So instead, why don't you tease it? So instead of saying um, two for one offer on insert your retail product here, you can say, um, you can highlight that there are um, like, to be a bit general, like amazing deals and that kind of thing, you don't really want to talk about on that level. Um, but I'm trying to find the right phrasing for you uh, for a subject line. Um, you don't want to highlight specifically what the campaign's about, but you want to highlight that there's something generally related to it inside. Um, that being said, one great way that you can actually get huge open rates are by being quite vague. I wouldn't aim to do this all the time but every once in a while it can be funny to just put something like check out inside or guess what or something like that that makes people go okay what is this it's a bit clickbaity but um it's kind of fun as well when you do that um but the main goal is for them to open up this email and the only way to do that is to encourage them in the subject line to give them a little awareness of what the topic is about. As I said, sometimes you can just go completely off point and just kind of interest them in opening it anyway. But that subject line is, is a real important step. And I wouldn't put too much information in it 
because then you're telling them what's inside. So definitely highlight the idea of it, kind of like a teaser trailer for a film. Um, not the trailers that show five minutes of the entire thing. I'm talking like a couple of seconds of introducing the tone of what you're actually aiming for. So once we've encouraged them to open up that email with an, with an enticing subject line, we are now at the next stage and we're not there yet. This is just step two. We've got them to open the email. Now we have to encourage them to do something about the email. And this is how we build it out because, again, this is what they're first going to see. So a lot of times a successful email will start with an image. Um, there's no right or wrong here as well. These are guidelines. Like there's been real successful email campaigns that have went out purely on text basis that have been written as um, conversational to the audience. So it can be like, hi, Sarah, I realize that we have a few um openings this week. I was wondering if you'd like to book one in. Here's the link. There you go. Very clean, very successful email campaign, um, but it doesn't always have to go that way. Um, usually, a lot of the campaigns that work involve some kind of marketing in terms of using images, using graphics, using headers and things like that. So it's, it's more professional um, and it's more businessy rather than the casual conversation of it. But as I keep saying, there's no right or wrong as such, but these are really good guidelines to keep in mind when you're putting a campaign together. So generally how it can work is that an email starts with an image, a nice, clean, beautiful image that it relates to what the subject is. A lot of times people recommend that you put a person within that image because people generally react better to faces and it makes sense. Uh, you can put a business in it and it's kind of a cold statement of like that's just a window with a door you know so generally people's faces really help and that's where you can lead your actual campaign with like they open up the email right away big image potentially with like text in the image that highlights what the topic is about like that would be in journalism terms that could be like your headline you know the headline could also go underneath the image as well like alternatively um so you have your image, then the next step is the headline, which is reinforcing exactly what the topic is actually about, you know? So I'll tell you, like, um, I recently put together um, the Facebook ebook email. So we just finished a brand new Facebook ebook for you guys. And I put an email together to send to our audience to turn around and say, hey, look, we've got a brand new ebook. So what I did was in the subject line, I said, brand new ebook has just arrived. Perfect. There's enough information there to let them know what the topic was about, but not enough for them to actually decide, you know what? I'm not interested. I want them to open up the, uh, the email. So once they do, the first thing they see, big graphic, somebody holding an e the ebook. You've got that person's face. You've got the book. Makes sense. And, uh, the headline was something similar to like, Fresh off the presses, the brand new Facebook ebook has arrived. Again, we're reinforcing what the topic is. Then we get into the little nitty gritty of describing a bit more. So think of it as your hello, my name is Chris. Once they say their name, now I'm going to describe a bit more about who I am. That's what we're doing with this topic. So in this campaign, we're now going to describe a bit further into what the actual topic is about, what the information is. I guess in journalism terms, you're looking at the who, what, where, why, and when. So it's just fleshing out what the purpose of the email is. So if you were to hold an anniversary party for your um, your business, though, so it's like you've turned three years old today, you know, or you're turning three years old in two weeks and you want to invite VIPs down, like you'd have an image that's relating to a celebration of like a birthday or an anniversary you'd have the headline be relating to the fact that you turned three years old or that a party is coming up soon. Now you're going to give more context within the body of it. Um, usually people put about one or two images into each email. The reason you might do more images is if you feel like you're getting quite text heavy and you want to break up the imagery or you want to break up the text messages, the text, the copy, as they call it. In it, uh, you want to break that up with a bit more um, visually flattering media. So you can put a graphic in, you can put a GIF potentially, that kind of thing. Um, that would be why you want to put more images in. 
generally don't go too crazy on images because uh, spam filters can detect that. So if you're way too image heavy, that's triggering the, a lot of the inbox filters to say that this is salesy and we don't want salesy. So don't go too text heavy, potentially one or two, depending on the campaign. But if you just look at it, step back and look at your campaign and you see that it's a lot of text, potentially you might want to drop another image in just to kind of relate to the next um, paragraph that's coming up or so. Um, so the relevant headline, the imagery, the tone I think is important. Now, I can't exactly tell you what your tone is going to be because your every business is different and every business kind of feels like it's an extension of the personality of the people who run it um, in a way. So I know for us and I know that the material I respond best to personally is I like to be um, inspirational, enthusiastic optimist. Like you want to be encouraging, you want to be supportive and you want to invite people into these amazing opportunities that you're sharing, you know? That's a great tone that I think can always work well. Um, again, it's up to you as, as to how you want your brand to be represented. But just to give you an example, like I love the inspirational, enthusiastic, optimist tone because it's all inviting and it's 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 so nurturing to somebody to open it up because everyone's busy and it's nice to get good news. And if you frame your campaigns in like, hey, we've got good news, that's always a, a welcome addition to someone's day. Um, and finally, you want to wrap all of this stuff up, absolutely everything into the call to action. Now, a call to action or a CTA, as they would say, um, is basically what you're aiming for, to get your audience to do with the information you provided. So if you were having that th third anniversary party, you might put a link in to register for the invitation. So you invited them, you want them to register because if you just tell them they're invited, there's no official transaction on their part that they've actually signed up to anything. So it might be nice to get them to sign up so they feel like they've interacted. So you can have a link that leads to an Eventbrite page or you can have a link that um, goes to like a Google Doc that people like a Google form that they can sign up to. However, you kind of feel like doing it, um, uh, depending on the campaign, obviously. Um, but a call to action is crucial. It's exactly the purpose of why you're doing the campaign to begin with. So on a more general topic, like maybe you put out a monthly email that highlights what the um, what your offers are for that uh, particular month, right? Um, your call to action would most likely be an online booking link, it's like book your appointment now. There's a statement there. Sometimes you can put it as a button, but generally you need to let people access the, um, you need to let people know what you want them to do with this, with this information and make that readily available. Like people have done in the past, like put a phone number in or they say walk in, they are technically calls to action, but I feel like you're putting a lot of steps into the client's um, wheelhouse. Like it shouldn't be up to them to work really hard. Instead, like the online booking is a beautiful um, solution for your call to action because they've literally read something. There's a button there. They press it. They book online. It's just seamless. It's easy. And then they can move forward. So when you have all of that put together, what you have then is you have your subject line. You have your imagery, you have relevant headlines, you have a tone of voice that's specific to your brand. And as I like to say, like, I like the enthusiastic optimist route, but that's up to you. Um, personalization as well is a, another one. So you can actually put their first, if you have software, you could put their first name tag in. So it's like, hi, Sarah, or that kind of thing. Um, and then end it with a call to action and make sure that call to action is relevant to what you want them to do with this information. And that's it. That is basically the anatomy of a successful email campaign. From the data we have on our system and the Fora software, and when we analyze campaigns for salon owners and stuff, we always find that the ones that succeed the most are the ones that contain all, if not most, of those topics right there. So guys, I hope you enjoyed that episode. Um, we'll be coming back next week with the future episode of, I think it'll be episode seven of the salon marketing Q and a, 
And um, while I'm at it, I'll actually ask you guys here, and I might ask this the next few times, is there a certain time and date that you'd prefer these salon marketing Q&As to go at? Because at the moment, we're doing it at Tuesday at noon Greenwich Mean Time. Um, that's Dublin, UK uh, time. If you guys prefer a different one, I'd love to hear. We can do it Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. I don't mind when. We pick Tuesday just because of all the other material that we put out. But I'd love to hear your opinion. What day would you prefer the Salon Marketing Q&A to go live at every single week? Let me know. And as usual, if you have a question, you can drop it into the comment box or email us at letsgrow at forest.com and we will dedicate a future episode to your query. My name is Chris Brennan and let's grow. Yeah.